Hey everybody, John Rairden here for Nintendo World Report TV. What you are about to see is an interview with a company called Lienzo, who designed a game called Mulaka, which is coming out on Nintendo Switch March 1st. Uh, the interview was conducted over the phone, uh, and so the sound quality uh, for the gentleman from Lienzo is not fantastic. Um, but what they're talking about is extremely interesting, uh, just talking about uh, the preservation of cultural history through video games. Um, definitely worth listening to. Uh, I do apologize for the sound quality, just given the circumstances, it was the best we could do. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. Thank you. So, uh, Mulaka takes place in northern Mexico, centers around the mythology of the Tarahumara tribe. Um, not a topic that I've ever seen in a game before. So, uh, how did you guys come to come to that idea for a game? Well, it, it was basically that. That is something that we believe it's worth noting. I mean, it was not being exploited on essence of the word in the best medium to tell stories according to us, which is video games. So we uh, live in Chihuahua State, so it's fairly common for us to see and interact with Tarumara people here in the state. And all the locations that are represented in the game are actual locations that are hours away from our city, so we're reading most of them. So we already knew that these locations were the perfect setting for an epic adventure. That was never part of the question. The question was that whether or not these um, myths and legends applied to a gaming space well. And we ran into the pleasant surprise that they do. They actually translate amazingly well to a video game, according to us. So we started doing some research, uh, what, what little information there was on the internet, and then going to the actual locations and speaking to elders and anthropologists and culture experts and going to um, reservations, I guess you would call them in, in, in the U.S., and seeing these, these places and talking to the people really convinced us that this is a culture worth uh, spreading the word about and also preserving in a video game format. So we believe that we have... Uh, the potential to have a culture here that that is a still alive and going strong, and b that still preserves lots of the traditions from the times that they were achieving, really. And we are ignoring uh, most of the tribes that have all these amazing things and idolizing a lot of tribes or cultures that are already extinct, which is okay, but not to. Uh, it's not okay to you know, let these other tribes and cultures go extinct by not talking about them. Just a couple minutes about that idea, John. Uh, Earlier, I'm going to write it. Uh, you know, it was a huge uh, point of inspiration for us, uh, 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 and you know that this culture, this, this you know, most of this legend, and most of this myth are uh, you know come from oral tradition. There, right? Uh, while we found the little we could find was only a little snippet of what there is of this guy. And yeah, it was until we went to the, the communities and we actually spoke with elders and spoke with anthropologists and we realized that there was so much more and this so much more as well. And at the end, it inspired us to do uh, a game of epic, you know, about uh, an epic story such as the one in Malacca. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, because this is made, mostly uh, transmitted by oral tradition, a lot of this myths and legends are slowly fading away, which is what uh, Eggers refers to when he says that it's going extinct. Uh, and, you know, part of our goal with the game is to try and, and you know, have some cultural preservation going on with it, and, uh, a little bit of, of uh, language preservation, too, or there are some of the narrations we came out in Talamara, Native Talamara. Uh, and, and it was a very important point because, you know, new generation of Talamaras are unaware of this huge cultural heritage that they have behind them uh, and, uh, you know, in, in a culture that's still alive, but just, it has such a great and vast and rich uh, background and, and history behind them, uh, we thought it was important to try and, and keep those traditions, maybe not alive, but at least known, right, uh, from both inside and outside of, of, of Mexico. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, you, you mentioned, uh, like, talking to anthropologists um, and elders. Um, as far as video games go in terms of, of preserving this history, 
how did those people react when you told them that that was the reason you were doing the research? Like, was that, did that come off as strange to them? Yeah, it was completely the uh, identification process. And it was a really long process. By the way, I forgot to mention my name. I'm Edgar, the director of the studio. At first, it, we bumped into what was, what you would call indifference, because for them, video games are not part of your psyche at all. What the closest thing they have is arcades that you find at mom and pop shops uh, over the, the Sierra. And that's about it. So it was first a process of education, I would dare to say, uh, letting them know how the video game industry is now and what we wanted to achieve. But once we went over that hurdle, they were all for it, they, especially the cultural uh, leaders, because they know the importance of presenting. And, and preserving this uh, tradition in a, in a format that is appealing to newer generations. So after we went through that uh, aspect of explaining what a video game was and what we wanted to do, they were all for it and they were really supportive of our, of our idea. Have, have any of them seen the game yet, or is it is it still too early for that? Like, has have they given you any feedback on it? Yeah, of course. Uh, since the very first approach we had, we we went to them with concept art and drawing and ideas of mechanics, at least what they were back then. And then the visits that we did after that, because there were recurring visits, as I mentioned, we live a few hours away from the Sierra, so we've been a bunch of times. We always uh, go and present them the newest uh, version of the enemies or the myths or the assets or the uh, mechanics and stuff like that. Uh, but again, for them, it's another universe. Uh, to be completely honest, they see the game, and what they see are, are like this uh, little, what you may call it, animations or, or, or models that they like because they kind of barely know one of the, those uh, mythical creatures, and they see them in the screen. And, but that's about it. Uh, when we get deeper, though, <clears throat> we ask for opinions about the uh, creatures, we do get feedback. For example, on the very first uh, build of Mulaka, we wanted Mulaka to fight a bear. But we bumped into the surprise that the bear is an actual demigod for them. So they would never harm a bear uh, knowingly and, and, and on purpose. So we had to scrub that thing out. Uh, and like that, there are a, little, a lot of little uh, details that we had to take care of uh, based on their opinions and feedback. Of course, not everything, because we are making a game, and it's firstly and mostly a fun game, not an educational game. But with what we could, we did uh, try to appeal to them in that aspect. Interesting. So, as far as the as far as the actual art goes, um, the the game has this really cool art style, and it reminds me a lot of like early 3D games, like like Super FX games on the Super Nintendo or some of the early, like, Sega 32X games. Um, what inspired the visual look of the game, and, and why did you choose it? So, the Tomara is not really very pictoric in the sense that they don't have lots of visual representations of their myths and lore, but what little they have, it's really this type of style, like geometric shapes that uh, are the um, theme on their pottery or their clothing or stuff like that. And the little pictorial thing that exists, for example, there's this UNESCO protected heritage site about an hour away from here called the Cueva de las Monas, uh, Resort de Cubi in the game, where there's this actual painting um, from cave, cave, cave times, and we depict it exactly as it is in real life in the, in the game. And from that and the patterns that we can find, we can inspired to represent their culture uh, in that sense. So the Nibutiera, the art director, uh, gained the insight from all of those uh, little stuff that we found, uh, most of which we found in one of our visits to the Pakine site, which is an actual ruin, ran, ruin now, uh, heritage also, where there are a lot of preservations and depictions of ancient, like uh, uh, bases or pieces, pieces of clothing and stuff like that. So well, he decided that the locally aspect and art style appealed best to represent this culture. 
Yeah, when I when I first saw the trailers for it, it almost reminded me of of games like Journey or Abzu. Um, but those games focus a lot more on being like experiences, like kind of just two hour bite sized chunks that you just kind of walk through. Um, whereas Mulaka still feels very much like a game, despite being very artistically and and culturally satisfying. Um, so as far as the actual gameplay design goes, um, how did you decide how the game should play? <laughs> Well, the whole idea of, of, of the game of Mulaka um, started, by the way, I'm not also the programmer here. Um, it started with Edgar one day arriving to the studio and, and saying something like, hey, what about making a Zelda game, but about Saromar? <laughs> so it was pretty much like, since we started knowing um, more and more about the legend in their myth, um, it became very clear what type of game we wanted to make, right? And it was like the perfect pick. Um, so yeah, we, we had it very clear um, that we wanted to make a sort of like uh, adventure game since the beginning. Did I hear you mention Zelda? Were there other games that kind of inspired you? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I mean, again, uh, reiterating, it, it's hard to make a 3D action adventure, adventure game without thinking of the Zelda series, and that was a huge point of inspiration. Uh, but again, because we made uh, a lot a game that's fairly centered on combat. Uh, and everything around, you know, like main <laughs> gameplay mechanics around uh, revolve around that combat. Uh, we took a lot of inspiration of, uh, from other titles uh, uh, akin to that genre. Things like uh, Dark Fighter. The first Dark Fighter was a huge point of inspiration uh, in terms of how we were going to handle that. You know, the combat in and on itself, uh, uh, using uh, closed spaces and zone like to, you know, close up the player and then make them actually fight throughout the game. Uh, things like the transformations and stuff were inspired by other types of games that also have a very keen, uh, you know, like that, you know, transforming side. Dark, uh, Dark Souls was a huge uh, source of inspiration in terms of, you know, how important it is to have a good defensive system within that combat. Uh, uh, you know, and that's why there's a lot of emphasis on the dodging abilities of, of Mulaka. Uh, Mulaka has a lot of, of uh, you know, uses for the transformations and, and all that links to that spiritual side that we also wanted to emphasize in the game. Uh, and that you can also see with mechanics like the Sukhuram vision, which, you know, again, allows you to see the spiritual world and you get to see the souls of enemies and, you know, ergo see the, the, how much life they have left and then you can strategize accordingly once you have that information. Uh, and, and it's, you know, it's a big amalgamation of different uh, titles and games that probably will change from people to, you know, whoever you ask within the team will give you a different answer on what they took uh, from those games. But it's definitely, you know, uh, a lot of things that inspired, especially those combat-centric titles. Uh, so if somebody, uh, like, I know, like, I, so I, I went into this game knowing knowing nothing about it, knowing nothing about the, the history or any of that. Um, and because of playing it, I've, I've done, you know, some, once I started getting into it, I started Googling some things just cause I was curious. Um, so if people are playing this and they're, they're kind of getting interested in the, the history that the game depicts, um, are there any particular places you guys would recommend like going to start learning about that stuff? Well, the game is heavily based on a book called the Anilami. Uh, and the person who wrote it is actually the lead anthropologist of the team, I guess you can call him. Uh, he's a, a, a person who's an expert in ancient culture and an expert in the Taromara culture. And he wrote this book, this amazing book, which is um, he took all the myths and legends from the Taromara people and he drained uh, them through this gods that he made, uh, plucking out any Western influence so that he ended up with this distilled, authentic, 100% Talumara uh, collection of myths and lore. So that would be a, a really cool start. And we actually did this video documentary series. They're really short videos, uh, just three of them, called Behind Mulaka. And we delve into more about this research process and how we depicted the, the game and where did we go to actually learn about this stuff. Awesome. So, uh, well, thanks a lot, guys. Um, I just one one last question uh, to wrap up, I guess. Uh, do you guys have any plans for what you want to do next? And is there more like kind of history stuff like this you'd be interested in doing? 
Well, we definitely we'll definitely keep doing video games. We talked this over with our investor, and however this Mulaka trip and journey ends, we're still going to make games. Uh, personally, I would love to keep making uh, cultural games, and that's not immediately referencing uh, tribe or like indigenous tribe games, but cultural in the aspect that there's a lot of stories. Uh, maybe not just in Mexico, but in Latin America or even in the U.S. that are not being told. And we're focusing on, on other stuff and forgetting all of these amazing stories that have not been told in this medium, for example, like maybe the Mexican Revolution or the, 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 the aspect of the, the conquistadores, but over here in the northern side, or how the actual Apaches ran into the Tarumal a couple of times back there. Uh, all of these, I, I would love to explore them in, a, in, in, a, in video games. But since we are a, a city that's looking to kind of keep being alive, we have to look forward to seeing how the audience responds to Malaga first. As I was going to say, I mean, we are a video game development studio, so we are uh, definitely focused on just to keep making uh, games, and we, we definitely want to keep our partnership with Nintendo growing and going stronger and stronger. So uh, I think that any small new studio like us has to ask themselves, what can we offer to the game, to the game and to the consumer that nobody else is offering already? Because this industry is very, it's a very big industry, but that means there's also a lot of very talented studios worldwide just making some incredible projects. Uh, there are experts in narrative and game design everywhere. You know, like uh, a gamer right now has a ton of options, right? At any time. So we gotta ask ourselves, what can we do that nobody else can do as we can? What can we offer that really no other studio can do? And with that in mind, we will pick our next project. Like, what do we have in our region or with our particular ability? Like, what can we do that nobody else really can? So our next project will be driven from that question as more of it. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for uh, for setting aside the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Not a problem, John. Yeah. On the contrary, thank you for the time.